All right, I am going to show you how to download and use Seemly 2D. It is my absolute favorite software. It's what I create all of my sewing patterns on. It's completely free to use. There will never be a charge for anything on it. It's totally open source, which means that you can use it forever for free. It's great. So all you're going to do is go to Seemly 2D in your search bar, or you can go to Seemly.net. Go ahead and open that up. And you'll see this picture of this gorgeous, looks like a coat maybe, that somebody made. Hit these three bars over on the right side of the screen. And then you're going to pick what you're downloading for, depending what computer you're downloading onto. I have a Windows. So you click that. I already have it downloaded, so it won't let me download it again. But you'll just open this, and you'll get that pop-up that says allow this to make changes to your device and you say yes and then you'll get an installation window that you just click next through um, I do think it asks you to pick a language and then there is one other option you're gonna get to pick what type of pattern making files you want to use they're all the same I mean I'm sure there's slight differences for people who understand those but just pick one just pick any of the many and install it onto your computer all right, so once it's installed, just open it up. This is the little icon down here on the right that it looks like on your desktop. And this is what it looks like when you first open it. It's just blank. You literally can't click on anything. It's just blank, new. You can do anything with it. So the first thing I always do is create a measurement file. You don't have to create a measurement file, but I would highly recommend it because it saves all the measurements you need. So you go to measurements. Open Seemly Me. Okay, I already have a few in here because I use this program, but we will create a new one. So you just hit New. Once you have them, you can open them and reuse them. Otherwise, New. I'm going to make an individual file instead of a multi size. And instead of centimeters, I like to do everything in inches, but it's up to you what you choose. So here is your measurements file. You can add known or custom sizes. Custom just means it's blank. You're going to name it anything you want. Neck, width. Everything has to be connected. So if you want a space, just do a dash or anything you want. And then you put in how big the neck width is. Four inches, sure. You can put a full name in here with spaces. So I can say, this is Emily's neck width right up to where a collar would land. I don't know, whatever you want. You can describe it. I've never put anything in these here, <laughs> but if you want, they're there for you. Okay, so that's a custom measurement. So if you have a strange measurement that you don't have an option for, you can add it in here, or if you don't want to scroll through the known measurements, you can add everything in here if you want. I really love using the known measurements. So as you can see, there are so many measurements that you can use that are already in here for you. All right, so all of these are our categories. Height, width, indentation, hand, foot, head, circumference, arc, vertical, horizontal, bust, balance, arm, leg, crotch and rise, men and tailoring, historical and specialty, and pattern making measurements. This is such a fantastic app or not app program, because it has so much in here already for us to use. So the ones that I use the most when I'm pattern making is circumference and arc and vertical. So circumference and arc, one of my favorite things is that if you click on any of these, it shows you a picture, and it tells you exactly what that measurement is. You can do full circumferences. If you see here, you can do half of the front measurements if you want. So if you're getting into corsetry and um, more complicated patterns, but let's just grab a couple base ones, so like hip or waist, sorry, excuse me. One of the nice things about this, if you are new to pattern making, this diagram shows up, and I can look at this and say, oh, I need a neck width, or I need a waist width, or a hip. Let's see, waist is number seven. Click on number seven. I want a high hip waist, that's eight. Okay, let's click on eight. I want a full hip, that's nine. Click on nine. So it makes it really, really user friendly. All right, then let's look into vertical. And again, I would definitely recommend looking through these. There's some fantastic stuff in here. All right, so same thing. If you click on different pictures, it takes you to what you're measuring. Honestly, this is how I usually find which measurements I'm looking for. I start clicking around. I'm like, oh, here's legs. That's what I needed. Let's do waist to high hip, waist to hip. OK, 
because those are the two measurement circumference that we clicked on. So then all we do is click OK and it adds them all to here. And if you hover in between these words, you can make them bigger so you can actually see what it says. But you don't necessarily have to because over here is the picture still. So if I click on this, this is my waist circumference. And again, my picture's up here to help me out if I'm new to this. Let's just say, for instance, our waist is 30. Why not? 30 waist, high hip, let's say 34. Ooh, not 24, 34. And then our hip circumference, let's say 40. We got a badonka donka in this one. So then these are our verticals from our waist down to our high hip, let's say that's six inches. And then from our waist all the way down to our full hip, let's say that's 10 inches. All right, so once you have all your numbers in here, we just hit save. It's gonna automatically prompt us to name it and save it into our measurements file. When you download the program, it automatically creates this measurements file for you and it's gonna keep all of your measurements files in here. You can even create a new folder in here. So maybe I could wanna say, um, Emily's measurements and keep all of my specific measurements in here. Or maybe I want to do a, a folder for all of my custom or children's patterns all in one, women's patterns in one, so on and so forth. All right, so we can just name this, let's just call it measurements for today, why not? And save it. One of the best, oh, I already made one called measurements. <laughs> all right, we'll call it measurements too. All right. So one of the really nice things about having these measurements files, so a lot of the work that I do is custom work, meaning that someone comes in and I have a dress they really love, they want it to their size. So I create a measurements file for every single pattern that I make. That way, when I open it up, whatever the pattern is, these are the only measurements I need to work with, and I don't have a hundred that I'm trying to put a hundred measurements in or search through a hundred measurements just to find the six that I need. So I make one for every pattern. But that way, too, let's say someone comes over and they want me to make them this custom dress, I open that measurements file. While I'm measuring them, I can put it in here, or I could even screenshot this and print it and write them out while I'm measuring this person. And then I would file, save as, create a new measurements file with their name saying, you know, fancy ballroom dress for Angie. Save it as that, and now their measurements are permanently saved in this file for me to use in the future if they call me and want something different. All right, so anyways, here's our file. We've saved it. We can actually exit out of this. It's there. So then on this, we go to measurements. Once again, you don't have to use a measurements file. You can create everything without measurements files. I just think it's so much easier to use a measurements file if you're creating, honestly, anything. But specifically, if you're making clothing, I think it's so much easier. So we want to hit measurements up here at the top. If you look where my mouse is, hopefully you can see this. Here, I'll doodle. Up here at this top bar, there is measurements. There we go. So we click on measurements and we're going to load an individual. Why is this not letting me? Oh, you know what? Because I haven't created a file yet. All right. So before you open your measurements, I'm so sorry. <laughs> all right. Before you do that, we need to create a pattern. So all we do up here at the top, this new button. Okay, and that's it. We just hit new and whatever we're making. Let's say um, basic pattern example. Okay, our units, we can choose whether we're working in inches, millimeters, centimeters, whatever. My measurements I put in in inches, so I want to work in inches. Again, if you don't use measurements, pick anything you want. Or if your measurements are something else, pick something else. Just hit okay, bam. All of a sudden, all these buttons are usable. I have an actual pattern I'm working on. So here is where we go up to the top again, and we're finally going to click measurements now. So measurements, and I'm going to scroll down to load individual because I created an individual measurement file. Measurements 2 is what we just made. Open. Bam. This pattern I'm working on now has all of those measurements into its system. So over here, on the left, this is where we actually make our patterns, okay? 
So this point is going to be my most commonly used, and this one specifically is what I use the most, point at distance and angle. This is my starting point. It's automatically going to give you a starting point. Click on it. Let's make a line. Okay? So I want to go directly to the right, which means zero degrees. You have to know a little bit of basic math on this, but I'll always explain it while I'm making patterns. All right, so straight to the right is zero degrees. For my length, I'm going to delete that. That is, in inches, the length of this line if I were to print this out on paper right now. <laughs> so I'm going to delete that. And look, the first thing that pops up is measurements because I have measurements loaded. So I can click any of these. Let's say waist circumference. If you double click it, it'll pop it up into our formula. All right, so if I wanted straight across the entire circumference of my waist, I could just hit OK. But I don't want that. I'm going to make the front of a pattern or the back of a pattern. And typically, I make it on the fold and mirror everything. So I only want the front, which is half of your waist. And I only want one side of it, which is four. So I'm going to divide by four. OK. OK. And then up here, we can hit Zoom Best Fit or Zoom Fit Best. And it's going to get it back in our window. So that's our waist divided by four. And then we're going to make a line going, let's see, we're doing bottom. So let's do down. Directly down is 270 degrees. Again, this line is 1.19 inches. I don't need that. In my measurements, let's do our waist to our high hip. So we double click that, and it goes into our formula. We're just going to hit OK. Zoom fit best. And now that's our waist circumference with our waist to hip. Let's zoom out a little bit. I'm just going to do a couple lines just so you get the hang of it. So now we click on our next point, which is this one. Let's make a line. Again, straight to the right is zero degrees. Get rid of this length. Let's do our high hip. Once again, divided by four. Keep everything the same. Oop. That is not what I wanted. Options. Let's change that. Wait, I didn't. <laughs> Oops. Waste a high hip. We don't want that. We want our circumference of our high hip. I have circumference divided by four. As you can see, it's really easy to delete stuff, though. There we go. All right. One of the things that I think helps, though, if we go up to the top left here where all of our like file and everything are, there's lots of things you can do on here. Um, all of these are across the top here, so you don't really need this. Mode, we'll get into later. Measurements, we already got into. Your history, you can see what all you've done. Your window. And I want to... Why is it not letting me view? I don't want that. What is this doing? Oh, there we go. Under pattern piece. Sorry about that. All right, mine usually pops up. I must have exited out of it last time. Go to pattern piece if it's not already up. You want to go to Tool Options. That way, everything you click on, instead of having to right-click it and hit Options to change that line, like earlier I had the wrong measurement in here and had to change it, if you just click on it, it pops up in Tool Options. It's called A3. I can change it to High Hip Circumference if I want, and now it's called that. I can change it to a dotted line if I want, and now it's a dotted line. I can make it a different color. I can change the length, exiting out. Again, it just pulls up this window again. It's a lot easier from this one. I can change the angle. Maybe I want it at 45 degrees angles for some reason. Yeah. Okay, so you can do so much from this. Um, you also want to look at, if you click on pattern piece again, you want to look at this group. You won't need it till later, but you want it to be there. Um, one of the things I love about this, so if I want some give and take on my outfit and I say, you know what, I need an extra half inch here so I can breathe in this, plus 0.5, and it does it for me. Let's say we want this to be two inches bigger, plus two, enter, does it for me. Makes it so easy. This is so user friendly. Um, I'll get into some of these more complicated functions later, but really for this video, I just want you to be able to download the software, open up a new pattern, um, because I do upload a lot of videos and I'm going to keep uploading, I'm going to start uploading a lot of videos, I guess I should say, of um, specific patterns. So since all of my patterns that I use, I make on this, I'm going to start recording them for you guys so that you can make your own patterns exactly the way I do, put in your own measurements, print them out at home.
So this video is just downloading it. I'll make some more videos on how to use the software more, how to print, how to change things, do more complicated stuff with it. Um, but yeah, this is just our basics. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful. Make sure you like, make sure you subscribe so I can help you walk through actual pattern pieces, how to print them, how to mess with them a little bit. Um, yeah, <laughs> and post any comments or questions you have below. I do answer comments and questions. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.